thank you very much. I'd like to thank the organizers. It's a great honor to uh, speak in this conference. And uh, as Ryan Masiewicz Gelfand, I just had a very few times uh, had an opportunity to see him, and it was a very left a very memorable impression, but of course, indirectly, he was a great influence um, and his uh, mathematical grandson, so I owe him quite a lot. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> so I will uh, report on a joint project with um, David uh, Cashdown and uh, Yasha Warshawski. Um, so the goal uh, of this project is to develop, um, so apply, um, so goal is to apply the uh, methods of algebraic geometry, more specifically of uh, elliptic sheaves, to <coughs> uh, some questions in harmonic analysis of PAD groups, and more specifically to understand the uh, phenomena of uh, stability and or endoscopy. And I will say a few words uh, on what this words stand for. And uh, and so before I forget, I should say that uh, uh, George Lustig uh, recently has produced some, I mean, has published some, uh, posted some papers which uh, uh, were apparently related. I mean, so some different uh, approach to related problems and treated by similar methods. And again, eventually I hope those two pictures will Merge. <clears throat> so, um, so let F be a local non Archimedean field. And, uh, well, for the next few minutes, it doesn't matter which characteristic, uh, what the characteristic is, but later we'll assume that characteristic of F is positive. So F is going to be isomorphic to the ring of Laurent Power series of a finite field. And we take G algebraic group over F, a G underlined uh, algebraic group, and we take a group of F points, so G is a reductive, and for the peace of mind, I assume that it's split. Or, uh, <clears throat> the theory should encompass non-split groups as well. So um, uh, I'll say very uh, basic, uh, naive words about what endoscopy is about, so, um, <clears throat> so uh, harmonic analysis or representation theory uh, of G is a well, well developed, well studied subject, um, uh, but uh, so G, in this subject, G is treated as a uh, abstract topological group, but in fact, of course, it came from an algebraic geometric object and so, very roughly, uh, I will try. So, the theory uh, wants to understand the uh, uh, how the algebra geometric structure of G is reflected in harmonic analysis. So, harmonic analysis reflection, reflection in harmonic analysis. of <coughs> algebra geometric um, nature of G. 
uh, to make the next step, I need a few notations. So, well, the standard way to start developing representation theory <laughs> is to consider, of course, the functions on the group. So, just uh, <coughs> locally compact compactly supported locally constant, thank you. Locally constant uh, compactly supported functions. So, well, I'm sure I will get a little confused this too, but th these are, yes. C values. So this is isomorphic to H, which is, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, measures satisfying the same conditions, but cho of course choosing the hard measure we can, we can identify it, but not quite canonically. And this uh, sits in the space of distributions on G, which is just C or G star, just a full dual. And this contains the uh, one of the central objects of harmonic analysis, the space of invariant distributions. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, dist g, well, g, so these are invariant distributions, just the functions which are invariant under conjugation. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> it is known that, uh, uh, due to Harishandra, that this space is the closure in the natural topology of the span of o gamma, where <coughs> gamma runs over a regular semi-simple conjugacy classes. So say for GLN matrices with no uh, multiple eigenvalues. And so, uh, and o gamma is just orbital integral. Conjugation. And um, so the uh, phenomenon that is studied by this theory um, has to do with the fact that um, two regular semi simple uh, elements, they can be conjugate of algebraic closure, but not necessarily conjugate. So, along with orbital integrals, so for um, gamma and g, we can consider uh, the stable orbit of gamma is the following edge it is, uh, so we conjugate, so it's we take the set of g, x, g inverse, uh, where we allow g to run over the points of algebraic closure. X is and x is gamma, yes, that's fortunately not very, not very different. Rs, regular semi-simple. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we allow this thing to be conjugated by uh, a matrix in algebraic closure, and then we intersect it with G as sitting inside the points in algebraic closure. Uh, and well, maybe let's call it somehow. Huh? Yeah, okay, this is the Yes. Uh, <laughs> tell me, you can choose one of the options. Yeah. Okay, you don't want to choose. Okay, so um, all gamma stable is is that, and so <clears throat> uh, so uh, uh, the space of so we can define the stable uh, orbital integral uh, as. Um, 
Um, yeah, so I, uh, maybe I should c correct myself. So let me, let O gamma be the orbit and then the dist corresponding distribution, the orbital integral be, uh, be denoted by delta O gamma, so orbit. Delta O gamma is orbital integral. And then we have this table uh, orbit and then we say the space of table distributions inside uh, the space of invariant distributions is uh, uh, the closure of the span of uh, all um, stable orbital integrals. So we integrate over this larger set, which is breaks. Is that yeah, there is an invariant, so G is regular same symbol, there is an invariant measure. And it's defined uniquely up to scalar, but it doesn't matter because I just consider the... Yeah, I mean, I understand for one gamma, but as soon as you have to stable... Right, that's a good point, but yes, there is a... It's easy to uh, show, and I probably don't have time for this, that choosing a, uh, an invariant measure in one orbit would get... Right, invariant uh, differential form of, well, yes. yes. And the form of the orbit automatically generates a measure of transition. That's right. Is this, are we talking only about regular semi simple? Or? Yes. Yeah. And so closure. And so, uh, so by the way, the same works uh, for Lie algebra. And so there is this example which I had to study first year in the university when uh, G is SL2. And well, it, you can write it for SL2 over a non Archimedean field, but let me take it over R. And then I take a regular semi simple orbit, so it's matrices with trace zero and fixed determinant. And so if this determinant is positive, then I get this two. Uh, I mean, the orbit is uh, one sheet of the hyperboloid, but the stable orbit is, uh, and so delta or I is invariant non-stable. <coughs> and delta one plus delta or two is a stable distribution. And uh, yeah, so uh, and just an, uh, another basic remark is that uh, for G equal to GLN, <clears throat> this is not very interesting because it's an exercise. Everybody can show that distribution, invariant distribution is equal to stable distribution N for G equal to SLN. They are not equal, but uh, it's easy to say what they are. Is equal to distributions on G invariant with respect to GLN. Uh, okay. And uh, maybe I will not have much to say about it, but just, you know, since I mentioned this word, about endoscopy, I just want to say, I mean, in that theory, one kind of um, uh, tries to understand uh, various pieces inside this invariant distributions, there are subspaces, one of which is a space of stable distribution. And um, there are other, uh, so stable, um, uh, says a space of stable distributions uh, on G inside all invariant distributions is an example uh, is one of the endoscopic pieces uh, and, uh, uh, and together they span the space of invariant distributions and uh, I mean the interesting part of the theory I think related to uh, Nogden's talk this morning is uh, comparing uh, 
uh, <clears throat> comparing those uh, non-trivial pieces with the stable piece for a different group uh, related to G in a non-trivial way, but I just want to make one rather basic remark. So uh, just basic example. So example of a distribution in another piece Well, going back to this picture, uh, it's uh, just a difference, so delta O1 minus delta O2. So uh, slightly more generally, uh, one can show in general, uh, can show that um, the set, um, so if we take this, um, stable uh, <clears throat> orbit of a semi-simple uh, regular element. So uh, as we discussed, it's the union of orbits, but so the indexing sets for this orbit, in other words, the quotient of this by G, is a torsor for an abelian group related to first Galois homology. For our for an abelian group, a gamma, which is the kernel of H1, the Galois group with coefficients in the centralizer of gamma to H1, Galois group uh, with coefficients in G. That really doesn't matter so much for me because I won't have time to just go into any depth here, but I just want to say one kind of basic thing is that, so my example would be the following. So the character, so um, uh, I mean, if I choose a, a, an invariant measure, uh, so as we just discussed, stably invariant measure on this stable orbit, Uh, so then every function on this uh, finite set defines a measure, another measure just multiply uh, by this invariant function. We so, and so we get uh, a measure, well, maybe up to a scalar, which is not important for me here, uh, for every character. of uh, this final group. And this would be an example of a distribution in one of those pieces, and we want to understand how <coughs> the space of invariant distributions uh, splits into those pieces. And again, huh? Going to H1, Galago okay, with coefficients in G. And so I just want to uh, make one. Just, hmm? Yes, thank you. So maybe this will be. the uh, last item in my list of kind of trivial remarks is, and that, uh, so just where do these uh, functions come from? And so to motivate what's going to happen next, let me recall that, um, so uh, functions on, um, well, we started with the <coughs> local field, but 
it's easier to construct functions on algebraic varieties related to finite fields. And so let's uh, look for a second at this more basic situation. So on X in this algebraic variety of FQ, they sometimes come from, I mean, are constructed using, come from elliptic sheaves or complexes by the trace of Frobenius construction. So for example, um, if x is um, g mod h, so g doesn't have to be reductive. I mean, g is connected. But that h is not necessarily connected. Then uh, from Lang's lemma, it's easy to see that g mod h of fq uh, divided by g of fq, if you're not mistaken, it's just pi naught. Uh, so yeah, I assume something. I assume that all components of h are defined over my field. But under uh, some natural assumptions, this is just uh, pi naught of h. And h is commutative. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to say this, but thank you. But then, um, so geometrically, a character of uh, pi naught of h defines a local system, right? So it's, well, by, say, if you think about C, then you know, have this long exact sequence of on homotopy. And so, uh, so um, you have pi 1 of g mod h mapping to pi naught of h. And so, so it defines a local system. And also the same works in the elliptic setting. And so the corresponding function, so trace of Frobenius uh, corresponding to this local system L chi will be exactly to the proper, well, I mean, I, the constant depends on how I make it, uh, how I make Frobenius act there, how I make it an analytic shift. So this is exactly constant times chi. So in other words, we, we get this kind of functions from basic elliptic shifts. And so that's one of the motivations to try to construct these functions using elliptic shifts. But I mean, a more serious motivation Mm. comes from uh, the fact that this method was uh, tremendously successful in the case of a finite field. And so this is Lustig's character of, uh, theory of character shifts, which I want to say a few words about. Because, um, so, sorry, so before I so, uh, say that, I still want to I want at least to state a precise conjunction, and so and also say why uh, this uh, story is interesting and how it's related to uh, Langland's conjectures. Um, so, um, um, so um, uh, well, the space of stable distributions appears in the theory. Uh, uh, in local Langland's duality theory. And specifically this uh, uh, phenomenon of L, L packets, or L indistinguishability. And so I just um, uh, want to say a few words about this. Um, so uh, there is a conjectural classification, and uh, 
of uh, irreducible representations of G is uh, 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 roughly, so I may get something imprecise, but uh, it roughly says that, um, uh, so as follows, that uh, the set of irreducible representations of G is in bijection with the data of uh, phi, which is a representation of the, well, I should say whale deline, but something closely related to Gala group. It contains Gala group of F to the Langlands dual group. And there is additional uh, kind of finite piece of data, which is um, of interest to us here. Uh, so psi is an irreducible representation um, of the group of components of the centralizer of the image. And uh, if I fix phi and vary psi, so get uh, a set of irreducible representations um, containing, uh, yeah, just get a set of irreducible representations, which is called an L packet. And um, so this uh, notion of L packet is related, closely related to the notion of stability. And so uh, uh, there is this known conjunction in the subject that at least for temperate representation, so which I will not define, um, that um, uh, there is a non-trivial uh, for every Uh, tempered L packet. There exists a non trivial linear combination of characters of representations in the packet, which is stable. And moreover, uh, Partition of rep temperature representations, uh, I mean, in this packet, in the packet, which is stable, and uh, this is the uh, the partition of represent of the set of uh, temperature representations into L packets is the finest partition with this property. Let me not write it down, but basically just saying that, you know, if you understand everything about stable combinations of characters, you understand the petition of temperature representations into L packets. And uh, so this is, uh, so this explains why it's uh, kind of deep and interesting theory uh, uh, and related to Langlands duality. But this conjecture, I mean, unfortunately to address it, to even start thinking about it, you have to know um, what is the, uh, you have to know Langlands correspondence. And so since we don't quite, it's not quite proven yet, so, but we, uh, I want to state another conjecture which is, can be stated directly, independently of Langlands classification, but still interesting and uh, maybe somewhat weaker, but still rather interesting. And so, okay, so yet another uh, uh, ingredient of the basics of the theory so, Bernstein Center. Yes. It is, uh, well, I didn't say what character is, but whatever it is, it's a distribution. And so, so it should lie in this. 
by definition, it's an element of this like, space of variant distributions, and I want to lie in this space. So, um, yeah, so Bernstein Center. is, uh, so like Z of G, it's the set of all uh, invariant distributions uh, such that uh, Z star uh, H lies in H for all so star means convolution, it's defined for any distribution where you can Convolve it with the completely supported local constant distribution, and we get a priori. Uh, a priori, it lies in uh, uh, in what I called distributions. But I require it to lie here, and I require this to happen for all h and h. So this is a, a Lie algebra analog of this as can figure out, huh? H is the completely supported, locally constant completely supported measures. And so Lie algebra analog of this uh, notion is the Fourier transform, so functions, invariant functions on the Lie algebra whose Fourier transform is locally constant, which are conjugation invariant and have locally constant Fourier transform. Okay, and so, so this is by definition some uh, uh, space of distributions, but in fact, it's, there is a naturally defined convolution, so it is an, uh, one can also say that it's maybe an analog, well, in some sense, it's an analog of the center on the, of the enveloping algebra in characteristic zero. This is a loose, maybe, analogy. But um, in any case, Z is an algebra. Z is a commutative frame under convolution. And uh, so Z, the, the good thing is that Z of G can act acts on every representation. I didn't define the category of representation I'm working with, but it's the usual one. Uh, uh, so, and on irreducible representation, it acts by a constant. So Z of G actually maps to the set of functions, and it's a homomorphism, functions from the set of irreducible representations to C. Homomorphism where this is considered to be Good point, good point. <laughs> From one set to another, yes. That's too bad because it was very visual and expressive. <laughs> but there is nothing to be done here. So, um, yeah, so, and um, now um, here is uh, finally the conjecture that I want to. So it will be a set of two parts, but the second part will finally be some statement which is independent, which you can at least state regardless of uh, any other conjectures. And so, so the, yeah, so we can consider, uh, uh, let's Z stable be the intersection of the space of stable distributions with the center. And so I will, yeah, so the conjecture says that first of all, Z stable is exactly the set of uh, elements in the, uh, in, this, in the Bernstein center, which are constant on every, such that the corresponding function is constant on every, on every L packet function is the corresponding function. Well, maybe let's call this somehow z goes to fz. And so such that <coughs> fz is constant 
on L packets. So yeah, this is closely related. I mean, I don't have to spend time on this, but this is, should be sort of clear that this is closely related to uh, the previous conjecture and in fact can be deduced from it. But at least uh, we can say the following. So another statement which is obviously implied by this is that Z's table in Z is a subring. So it's obviously Obviously, uh, B is implied by A, but you can address B independently. So this is which, well, something what we call stable center conjecture. <laughs> yes. And um, And this is what we want to address by uh, algebra geometric means. And um, so, uh, so results will be examples. So I want to explain is some particular results which produce examples of uh, uh, stable, of a sub rings in this ring con consisting of stable distributions or um, also examples um, of sol uh, examples of elements uh, in, in the stable center satisfying part A of the conjecture uh, in the sense that um, they would act by zero uh, in all representations, but those for which local language is known. So then it makes sense to state this conjecture. Uh, so a partial results. towards uh, conjecture A, B, as well as uh, some kind of approach, which hopefully will work in more general setting. Hopefully, eventually, the law is to prove the whole conjecture. And, uh, why is point huh? Why is point a less no, it's not. Yes, yes, I mean, no, the transition to something which is independent of Ludwig is here. Um, so, um, okay, so now uh, I think I, uh, again, so the uh, motivation from, for our method comes from linguistic theory of character sheaf and some earlier work I did with Victor Ostrich and Michael Finkelberg, which was an attempt to understand some aspects of it in a conceptual way. And so I need to say, uh, I mean, I need to spend a few minutes uh, talking about uh, G of FQ. And so as I said, there is this Lustig theory of character sheaves. Uh, so, what does it say roughly? So, <clears throat> just the bird's eye view of the theory is first of all, so here, I mean, of course, the after harmonic analysis questions are easier, yeah, well, absent because it's a finite group. And so we just uh, talk about this set of reducible representations. And first of all, I mean, due to an earlier work by Lustig joint with Deligne, uh, this set is partitioned. Yes, Co coefficients are always complex. So by uh, Deligne and Lustig. Um, it is uh, partitioned into 
um, uh, union of subsets indexed by something uh, uh, which I will call maybe theta. And a theta can be thought of making some uh, choice, so it's not the most canonical, but the shortest way to exp uh, s say where it lies. So it lies in the points of the dual group of a finite field, which are conjugacy classes, which are semi-simple, regular semi-simple modular conjugation. Uh, sorry, not regular, just semi-simple. Uh, that's one thing, and so um, let's uh, just uh, uh, restrict attention for simplicity to, in a sense, the most interesting case that I go to one. This is called unipotent representations. So yeah, what are those unimportant representations? Just to give you the flavor. So the set of unimportant representations it contains the representations uh, which are generated by the vector invariant under Barrel. So well, now I'm. Had the good luck, I have a good luck of having chosen my G to be split. <laughs> That's also right. And um, and th this set is very easy to uh, describe. This very classical result that this is the same as uh, representations, irreducible representations of um, the Hick algebra. Well, H. Algebra, which is as an abstract algebra, is amorphic to the group algebra of the wild group, so that uh, uh, classification of such representations is very classical. But this inclusion, so this is actually an equality in type A for GLN, but it's not an equality in general, so unless, well, maybe. there are other groups which is equality, which is not of type A maybe, but uh, unless. G is of type A. Um, and so there are other um, uh, other irreducible representations and um, which are unipotent. And, um, and then the second main ingredients, ingredient uh, of the theory, so here, this is the character shift theory per se, is that the expression, I mean, so there is an explicit formula, an explicit expression for characters of reducible representations in terms of character sheaves, in, in terms of maybe I should say almost characters. And so almost characters is a term introduced by elastic and uh, um, so almost character is a trace of Frobenius function, so almost <coughs> character is uh, a function, well, I didn't have this, I say f with f, so f is the trace of Frobenius function, and, f and f is this irreducible perverse sheaf
uh, uh, well, belonging to, I mean, a certain class of perverse shifts, so which is called character shift, irreducible uh, perverse character shift. So when G is GLN, Mm. the characters are equal to all most characters, but not in general, and there is an explicit uh, formula for transformation matrix called non-abelian Fourier transform, and yeah, uh, maybe if I have time in the end, I will say a few words about it, but most likely I won't. So now I want to quote um, a theorem. So, um, yeah, let's just look for a second here. So, in the most, in the uh, in the simplest case, in the ideal case, we we, we can we see that uh, all unipotent representations they basically just come from uh, well, they have been invariant vectors, so they appear as a sub-representation in the representation of functions on the flex space, right? So, but there are some representations in general, say for a group. As before, which don't, uh, I mean, which don't, uh, which are unipotent, but still don't. Or maybe that's not true. But there are some uh, uh, for some groups there are definitely unipotent representations, which don't appear in functions on the flex space. But uh, the point of the next theorem that is that if you go to this categorical world of sheaves, then still the flex space remembers all the unipotent information, and then slightly modifying this construction. So basically principle series, uh, categorical geometric principle series, remembers all character shifts, okay? And so theorem, in fact, I will not give it the most, the exact formulation, and so there are, in fact, there are different theorems here. So one is by myself, uh, Finkelberg and Nostrick, And another is by, uh, by Ben Svi and Nadler. Well, and yet another version is by myself and uh, uh, David and Yakov. So as I said, these are different th theorems which just sound the same. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so maybe just before I give the statement, let me just tri make some trivial, do some trivial rewriting. And trivial rewriting is that we can, maybe I do it here. So this trivial writing would be saying that if I consider the functions on group which are invariant under conjugation, and I put this index one, so this is span of uh, unipotent characters. Then uh, this space is naturally isomorphic to the center of the Hecke algebra, uh, which is, uh, by definition, the... Right, right, yeah, I... <laughs> uh, uh, so... This is something which is true for GLN and for G equal to GLN, but not true in general. In general, again, this uh, this has uh, the dimension of this is the number of reducible representations of the wild group, which is the same as a cardinality of this set, and dimension of this is cardinality of this set. Okay, uh, but uh, the uh, the uh, point I want to make is that this equivalence of monoidal category, that derived category of character shifts, well, it, now I'm talking about unipotent, but there is other, uh, it can be made more general, covering all character shifts. So this monoidal category is uh, equivalent to the categorical center of the derived category of shifts on well, which are G mod B mod B. So technically, I'll write this dashed quotient, which means uh, monodromic with unipotent monodromy, but 
at first approximation, you can imagine that this, is not, this arrow is not dashed, and then it's just equivariant getting rid. Yeah, so I wanted to say a few words about this. So, so uh, yeah, so uh, categorical by categorical center of the monoidal category, I mean the following. So if C is monoidal, then we have this Z of C is the Category consisting whose objects are um, pairs M and pairs of an object in my category C, and this commutativity isomorphism so so C is actually a collection of data for, for any object. It's a big collection of CX. Which is maybe I should write some continuous here. So C is the collection of Cx, uh, which is an isomorphism between M tensor X and X tensor M. And so this should be given for, for all X and C. And there are some there's some short list of actions. I mean, basically, it should be functorial, and then if I have like x and y, then it should be. So, yeah, so in this categorical world, the center is not a requirement. Element in the center is just not just a requirement that it lies in the center, but there's additional structure. And because of that, we recover, I mean, by go, go, Going to this categorical center, we recover all your important character shifts, even the cuspidal ones. Okay, and yes, so I actually will. So this is some equivalence, and I will need a formula. So the there is uh, the arrow in this direction is pretty obvious, but I will need the no interesting non-obvious arrow. Let's call it somehow um, capital phi. So, um, well, uh, just uh, like the very uh, kind of classical uh, uh, diagrams relate to this story are, uh, I mean, the diagrams in, um, encoding the action of functions on G on the principal series, uh, the action map, and also the adjoint um, uh, matrix coefficient map. And so, um, um, about the latter, you can think of also as averaging. So we have something which is, uh, say, equivalent with, with respect to Borel on two sides. So it's equivalent with respect to conjugation. And so we have this uh, functor M, sort of matrix coefficient map from sheaves. Um, Well, I mean, they should be also equivalent to respect to diagonal action of Cartan. Let's not dwell on this. To uh, uh, derive category of equivariant shifts on G. And so the claim is that um, this inverse functor phi sends F to M of F so that the central structure on F can be incorporated in action of the wild group on M of F, and then you can write down the invariance. So then you can consider invariance. So this is some, while this uh, arrow has obvious analog for functions, this operation doesn't have obvious analog for functions. So now I can come to the point of my talk, and the point is that uh, this can be uh, we can consider an, an, a fine analog of this. Uh, so there is a uh, well-known way to, I mean, so now I return to G of F, and now F is a functional field. And 
so we would like to build an analog of a uh, theory of character shifts and um, the and so we consider again this is a thing as int uh, uh, algebraic group algebraic int group over finite field but uh, the point is that it's too infinite dimensional to uh, easily, I mean, to, to even talk about uh, conjugation equivalent reverse shifts. Um, so again, we can, so G, so, yeah, uh, is, well, an infinite dimensional and in scheme, group in scheme, over, well, FQ. So hard to define, it's hard to define conjugation equivariant shifts. But uh, the analog of Hecke algebra is not hard to define and it's a very standard and well-studied object. So we can consider the derived category of sheaves on uh, this, um, well, let's call it G hat. Uh, G hat modulo I modulo I. So this is, so we can use this dash score factorization. So this is Iwahori group, which is the analog of Borel group. And uh, we can consider its categorical center. And now we can apply this uh, uh, functor of taking F to uh, what I called M of F. And this M of F, if F was central, then M of F could be endowed with the uh, action of the fine while group. And again, the group is infinite, so we need to consider derived invariant. So this is a <clears throat> an operation and um, and they said it's, um, ideally we want to say that this is a key. The, the, the source of this uh, functor is uh, clearly defined. Ideally we would, say, would like to say that it lands into equivariant sheaves on the loop group and uh, that may be not uh, clear for us how to define this thing, but uh, it's clear how to define its stocks. So, uh, so we can apply trace of Frobenius construction and so get a function on conjugation invariant function on G regular semi-simple. And uh, then uh, we can, um, and also, also a distrib uh, can be shown to be an invariant distribution. So, um, okay, I should be wrapping up. So I want to state, first of all, the results. Uh, well, on GRS of F, which is the same as G hat, uh, which is the same as G hat of FQ. Okay. Well, yes. Yeah, so I want to state the results and then my, when my, we'll make one general uh, comment, conjecture. No, we will produce it. We'll be produce some interesting. No, the, the yeah, no, the, the the conjecture on stability is vacuous, but this construction is interesting. So, um, uh, so theorem. So first of all, um, well, instead of uh, unipotent, we can take uh, maybe this is more addressed to the expert. So unipotent can be replaced by generic delinistic, generic. Uh, theta, so we can consider, uh, and then we can recover, reprove a theorem. And so, so we, we, we well, I, in this game, I should start with some central objects, but so I just start uh, with a unit object. So start with a unit object. And then uh, we reprove a result uh, of uh, Kazdan-Warshavsky uh, and proved independently by Debacher 
and reader, uh, which uh, is, uh, describes stable combinations in generic DEV0 L packet. So again, this is some regime where the uh, uh, representations are easy, uh, well, known to how to construct. That's one result, um, and then that's um, second result is geometric construction and stability of the uh, element in the Bernstein center, which is the projector to unipotent spectrum. So it's which acts by one on unipotent representations and by zero on all others. And then uh, let me end with the following remark. So, well, earlier in, I <coughs> proved the following theorem that the derived category of sheaves on that space, G mod I mod I, has a coherent, uh, uh, has a description I will not uh, state it now, but it has in, in terms of coherent sheaf on something related to the dual group. And corollary is that the center of this is, uh, of this category, is equivalent to the it's called inertia stack. So uh, coherent sheaves uh, on the what's called inertia stack. So we, it will be the set of pairs S kappa in uh, the dual group, well, modular the conjugations, and so so that S and kappa commute. Uh, and yeah, and uh, S is unipotent. And uh, so, uh, because of uh, applying all this formalism, uh, we can start with an object here, uh, which is also equivalent under Frobenius, which corresponds to raising s to scaling s, and um, raising s to the power q, and uh, apply uh, and get some invariant distribution on the on the PhD group. And so, the conjecture, which we hope is uh, true more generally, is that. Um, basically that this kappa is the endoscopic parameter. In particular, that if uh, F is supported on the set um, of date of pairs as kappa such that kappa is equal to one, then the corresponding distribution is stable. Okay, so I stop here, thank you. You mean in the basic case or in the final? Yeah, exactly what you, what you, what, what you described here. So there, there are some representations which will be unipotent, which that do not have... Uh, in principle, yes. yes. Although, I don't know if, if what we do is, can be called an explicit construction of representation, but... But, fixed, but yes, in principle... All of them will be covered by Yes, yes. But... More questions? Thank you.
uh, after the conference, you can get them in front of the 